Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll tell you about some great events where you can get hands-on training to improve cattle care. Plus, tips on low-stress cattle handling that'll make a positive impact on your operation. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Safe and effective cattle handling can lower the risk of injury and improve performance. Those are two things that can have a positive impact on your bottom line. That's why NCBA offers regional stockmanship and stewardship events across the country that provide hands-on training to improve cattle care. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter has a look at the value of these regional events. Each year, the Stockmanship and Stewardship Tour makes stops in locations across the country, giving cattle producers in all regions an opportunity to attend this valuable education program. It's really a great way for our farmers and ranchers to get together and learn more. We all know that we're stewards of our land, but there's always things we can do better. And the people that we have doing this, Kurt Pate and Ron, Dr. Ron Gill, are just great at teaching us uh, things about how to manage our cattle, how to be good stewards, how to be careful in what we do and cognizant of what we do, and to learn a little bit about the, uh, the animals that we work with every day. Just the visibility to, to low stress cattle handling and, and Kurt Pate, Ron Gill, um, having the opportunity to, to bring those gentlemen here to, to expose our producers to that. Um, you know, we, we all talk about low stress cattle handling in all of our extension programs, but to bring somebody in a, of that caliber um, and, and let them uh, be the expert and to convey that to our producers with their experiences and, and the, their teaching methods, um, we thought would be a real benefit to, to our producers. So the Stockmanship and Stewardship Program, uh, we're trying to reach people all over the country with as many uh, events as we can put together. And that takes a lot of time, effort, and resources. Um, and it wouldn't be possible without the support of BQA and the Beef Checkoff to reach those producers with what they all know is quality education, quality producer opportunities to continuously improve. In the arena, Kurt Pate and Ron Gill demonstrate the techniques, the skills, and the value of understanding how cattle can be worked easily with minimal stress on the animals and the people. And now Kurt can start sending them, and I'm going to be in a position, hopefully, to step down their side to speed them up and send them forward. So that process actually tells them where to go and then ask them to go, ask them to go there. Actually, what, you, what Ron just did there is he showed them the gate, opened the gate, and then just kept their mind on the gate the whole time. Sometimes talk about the perception of what we're doing. I don't want it to be a perception. I want it to be a reality that everything we do is in the best interest of the livestock and the people handling them. And I think we have the responsibility to do that. The big benefit of stockmanship, it doesn't cost you anything to change the way you handle cattle, and you get rewarded for it financially. So to me, it's a, a no-brainer that you change the way you handle cattle for their benefit, your benefit, and economically. Beyond cattle handling demonstrations, topics at the events range from information on better marketing of calves to insights on growing a cattle business. And producers who attend are certified in the Beef Quality Assurance, or BQA, program. The need to be BQA certified to me is just, it's the right thing to do. It sends the message that we know what's right to do and we've been educated to do it and we're willing to go that extra step to do what's right. I always tell our, my producers, if you can take BQA and get BQA certified and, and increase your knowledge base, then when you're talking to that consumer in the grocery store that may not know anything about agriculture, then you're better equipped to, to answer any of the myths that they may have. With tuition fees as low as $75 for the two-day event, cattlemen and women from operations of all sizes and with all levels of experience walk away with information they can put to work back home. It was well worth uh, the trip up here. You know, it teaches us to, to learn how to take care of our cattle, and, and that's what we're interested in, uh, you know, the, the stewardship that goes along with it. Again, we, did, we weren't raised around the animals, around cattle on a farm. So it's new to us and uh, it, it's, there's a lot of value that, that I think we're going to get out of it. 
heard the guys talking a while ago about cattle handling. I've been in the cattle business my entire life. Been handling cattle since I was old enough to walk and I picked up some good tips from them today on uh, on cattle handling. Things I'd never thought about before and, and it, I'll take home and try them next week. From the Stockmanship and Stewardship event in Clemson, South Carolina, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. These clinics are led by a great team of experts. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Kate Maher caught up with stockmanship expert Kurt Pate to get his thoughts on the value of these events. Thanks, Kevin. You know, cattle handling skills are important to producers of all sizes, and we're here with one of the experts in cattle handling, Mr. Kurt Pate. Uh, Kurt, I've watched many cattle handling demonstrations that you put on, and I learn something new every time. Uh, Talk about stewardship and stockmanship and just how it's evolved and how, how producers can really utilize it. So I, I kind of was at the, the beginning of this thing. I got lucky and, uh, and we did the first one in Texas and then we brought it on to the NCBA convention in Denver one time. And I kind of pitched the idea and, and they went with it. And uh, I thought would just have a couple of times and it has just grown more and more and more. And this new stockmanship and stewardship program that they got in, they've got going now is just I couldn't have dreamed it would have been so good. They've done such a great job of promoting and bringing folks in for total stockmanship, not just cattle handling, but the whole picture. And that's what stockmanship and stewardship is all about. And that's a really great point, the, the whole picture. And um, they've these clinics have been put on all across the country. How can producers of any size, regardless of their region, regardless of their facilities, really take these skills back and, and use them? There's a lot of ways to go about working cattle. And what I try to promote for myself, and I come from the horse world where this has been happening for quite a while, and it has in the cattle world as well, but we just didn't know we were doing it. But I try to work with feel, timing, and balance. And that's a, that's a nice three words. And so if we can use feel, timing, and balance, feel it means how much pressure you use or don't use, timing, pressuring at the right time, and balancing the two, then your facilities don't matter so much, your crew doesn't matter so much, your cattle don't matter as much because you fit the situation. So that's what I try to promote with the things we do in these cattle handling demonstrations. Common sense is hard to teach. Field timing balance is hard to teach. And so I think Ron and I have kind of a good combination of two different styles, kind of, but bringing them together. And when people walk out of here, they have ideas to go home with and think about yeah, absolutely. And there's there's additional benefits other than just uh, lower stress on the cattle. It's it's what other benefits to producers are there in terms of safety and economics even. Yeah, uh, and and that's the big thing we need to start proving in in our world is what. It's really hard to gauge what handling loading cattle on a trailer or loading cattle on a truck, right? What effects the cattle handling or the stockmanship makes because there's so many different variables. So that's the next thing we have to do with our stockmanship and stewardship is get proof that stockmanship does make a difference on the bottom line for safety and I say for human stress or non-stress. You made a comment earlier about the cow-calf producer being the backbone of this of this mm -hmm. industry and, and uh, as a former cow-calf producer myself that hits really close to my heart and I appreciate that. Um, again, why do we kind of need to all be on the same page in terms of what we do and, and doing it well to make sure that we're producing the beef that, the beef that's going to end up on plates? So back to the consumer, I mean, we actually, the, the, cow, the backbone is really not selling to the consumer. There's a few different people in between there, but with being the backbone, we have to get that resource and start it out. So whoever takes it from us can go on and produce that protein or that great piece of eating, that great eating experience farther down the line. So I think it's so important that we all get together and there's so many different ways, so many different breeds, so many different styles, so many different grasses, all these things that we can argue about. But there's so many different consumers out there. We can all provide something for everybody. And if we do it right, we do it uh, environmentally right, and we do it in a way that is sound, that the consumer can look at us and say, we can, go, we can do that. I, I think we're on the right track. And I think good stockmanship that you teach is definitely a common denominator among, among all producers. So thank you. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I, uh, 
I look at this whole thing, and I don't care if you're a grass finishing producer, or working in a uh, in a dairy, or you're a high level wagyu producer, or if you're finishing cattle in a large feedlot. The stockmanship is always a component of it, and the way those cattle, I, I if cattle chew their cud, I think we're doing good. If they're not chewing their cud, we're doing something wrong. And that doesn't matter what, what breed or what level of the industry in. So I try to get cattle to lay down, get full, chew their cud, and be happy. And then, then I think we're doing the right thing no matter where we're at. I agree. Kurt, thanks always for your insights. It's so nice to talk to you every time we see you. Thanks again. I have fun. Kevin, we'll send it back to you. As you've just heard, these training sessions provide valuable hands-on learning in the area of beef quality assurance and low stress cattle handling. If you'd like to attend one of these sessions, just visit stockmanshipandstewardship.org for details on when and where you can find an event. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll hear from another stockmanship expert as Ron Gill shares some great advice on how to safely work cattle. Stay with us, we'll be right back. It started with a man, a plot of land, and a few head of cattle. That man, your great-grandfather. You've got his name and his legacy, too. It's what you fight to live up to and work to leave behind. With innovation, integrity, and passion that runs as deep as yours, we'll be there for your operation, for your future, for you. This is why Merck Animal Health works. When it comes to the beef business, there's no room for gray area. The decisions being made in Washington affect the future of the beef industry, the livelihood of your fellow farmers and ranchers. Your National Cattlemen's Beef Association knows there's what benefits cattlemen and there's what doesn't. To us, it's as clear as black and white. Visit joinncba.org to learn more. Today, we're talking about NCBA's regional stockmanship and stewardship clinics and their value to the cattle industry. One person leading these events is Dr. Ron Gill of Texas, a renowned stockman who always provides great advice to producers. He joins us now with some valuable tips on working cattle. As you start to bring cattle into an alleyway or the next corral, whatever it might be, the best thing to do is push them away, once again, from where you want them to go, get your movement started, and bring them forward. This particular design is similar to what a lot of people have done for a long time, and they try to angle a fence uh, to where they can funnel the cattle into this area. What it actually does, though, is kind of prohibit the handler from being where he needs to be when the cattle start coming around. But that angle keeps you from being up at the front putting pressure on the cattle you'd like to see. This one is not a severe angle, so it's not too bad. But once again, it, it does kind of limit. I'd rather have square pins than I would have one at an angle coming into an alleyway. This is another different situation because we have to go around a 90 degree turn coming into this alleyway and send the cattle up. So we don't bring too many at a time because they'll wind up balked at some point and then you lose your motion and movement going on up. So I try to fill the front section and then come in and fill behind them so we don't have too many cattle in the alleyway. So now I'm just gonna go toward these heifers. Once again, I have to get some movement in them so I might as well get it away from them and get them positioned where they need to go. Once I get some of them started around, and hopefully I can put enough pressure on them to going in the alleyway. Once again, I'm just going to put pressure, step back, let some more flow. If I want to stop the amount I have in there at one time, then I can take this group on up. If you had enough people helping you, somebody could come behind you and fill the rest of the alleyway. And working an alleyway, you want to kind of work it like a dog a border collie might, go back and forth across if you're working by yourself. Once you get the cattle up here, 
they're then quite and ready to go through the processing area. It's interesting when you do that, look behind us, we have cattle actually f filling into the alleyway behind us when nobody has asked them to come. All right, as we are ready to reload the sweep tub and crowd alley, we don't want to use the sweep tub or a bud box or any other crowding area as a place to warehouse cattle. It's a flow through part of the system. It allows, the sweep tub allows you to use the gate to go ahead and push some cattle around that don't want to flow through. But in this scenario, we're not going to put anything in there until we're ready for them to go into the chute or into the lead up to the chute. So now we're going to do the same thing we've been doing out in the pasture, in the corrals. I'm going to go from here to the cattle, push them away from them, get some motion and flow started in the cattle. So as I step to them, they're going to start moving away from me. I don't want to hit them with this gate, so I'm going to give them a little time to come out of that corner. Once we get the flow started, we wouldn't even have to open or close that gate every time. But Once again, as I step to them, I won't get flow started. Try to bring about five at a time on these size of cattle. I can step forward, close my gate. As the cattle move forward, then I'm going to push this gate toward them. They'll start coming around. Put pressure on the cattle right here to get my flow started. Then I can bring the others to them. But we can do all that without any noise, any pressure, any hot shots, anything we can get our flow started through our chute. I also notice I didn't use the crowd gate of the sweep tub at all. All we did was use it to position the cattle to go in the lead up to the chute. A lot of times in systems with a sweep tub, we'll have cattle that, and we won't have a return box or something like that, so we'll just put cattle into the sweep tub. And if the person that's working the sweep tub gate stays back here behind them, he's actually drawing their attention away from the opening. The best way to do that is whoever puts the cattle in the sweep tub to close the gate and leave it, then let whoever's in front walk down the side and get some motion started in these cattle. This is very good representation. It takes a little more time to get cattle to flow out of one of these than it would if we actually set it up right and didn't use it to hold cattle as they come through. But even though it's a little slower, the cattle still float out of the tub when we use our body position. All right, we're ready for more cattle to come into the sweep tub and swing this gate away. Now, I'm not going to let the cattle just come in right now. I'm not set up really to do that, to get my flow like I'd like it to be. Step to them. Let them come around. I'm going to let this one come with them. Once again, as we get them pushed to the other corner, then they'll be ready to set up and ready to come back around the gate. All right, once again, we want our cattle flowing through this system. We don't want to hold them in here, so I'll wait till they come to the back. Let them start working themselves out of that corner. Need to put pressure on the front to get my flow started. If I don't work on the front, these cattle won't start in this chute because it's doesn't have the right angle. Once that happens, then I can bring more cattle. Now here I'm holding my position. You could do it with a gate, but why not do it with your body position? Once again, there's no stress on the cattle. All I do back up, let the rest of them come in. So if we can get establish that flow, position ourselves correctly, the cattle will learn how to work. In addition to Ron Gill and Kurt Pate, Attendees will get great advice from Dean Fish, manager for the Santa Fe Ranch in Arizona. Kay Maher had a chance to talk with Dean about the passion he has for educating cattle producers. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, we have the fortunate opportunity today to talk to one of the true industry leaders uh, in cattle 
handling and facilities design, Dean Fish. Um, Dean, you put on a lot of demonstrations across the country every year. What are some of the key topics that you want producers to take away from these demonstrations in terms of, of cattle handling? Well, thank you, Cade. We focus on low-stress cattle handling and, and, more importantly, effective stockmanship. You know, now in the beef industry and cattle industry in particular, we're asked to invest a lot in our cattle and our genetics and our vaccines. But stockmanship is truly the one thing that doesn't cost anything to improve, but will benefit and return to that producer multi-times what they invest into it. So, so we re- truly believe in that message. We truly believe in the partnership that Beef Quality Assurance has with Merck and the stockmanship and stewardship program. They put on a really, really nice show every year at the uh, the annual cattle industry conference. In addition to that, you reference a tour. We go out throughout the country and bring that to people's backyards so they can learn some of these low stress um, handling principles and, and learn about stockmanship. And I think today, now more than ever, with the beef industry um, kind of under the consumer scrutiny that it is, animal welfare is a top concern for a lot of consumers out there. But you made a point, the good news is it probably doesn't take a lot to to tweak um, somebody's cattle handling practices or even some of their facilities, maybe. Absolutely. And, you know, I really try to think about I'm not really in the cow-calf business. I I raise cow-calves, but I'm truly in the beef business. People want to know where that food comes from, how that animal is raised. And as part of my obligation, my duty is just to make sure that I'm doing that in the best way possible. And I think producers need to have that in the back of their mind. So whether they have a nice bud box, whether they have a sweep, a tub, uh, old narrow V crowd, there's different ways to be effective in how they handle those cattle that would be acceptable to the public, but also allow them to be effective in how they work with their animals. What would maybe one point of advice be that you could give somebody um, on how to, one thing that they could change to handle their cattle a little bit better? One of the things that was key for me to learn is to know when to apply pressure, but know when to release that pressure. So that release is so important. That's the reward that that cow or that horse get for doing a good job. And so the proper application of that pressure, but also the proper release of that pressure is, is key. If you go to a Ron Gill or a Kurt Pate session, they'll talk about different types of pressure. We can put a driving pressure, and that's usually our presence in that flight zone where that cow will want to move away. Um, and again, it's usually our presence. We're trying to use minimal or no noise. We're trying to use minimal or, or no flags and, and certainly not um, hot shots and so forth. Um, but the calmer we are and the better that we're able to apply that pressure with our presence, um, the better job that we'll do. And again, understanding how we relieve that pressure is, is also the second key part of that. And you know, we are all in the beef business, whether you have 10 head of cattle or 10,000 head of cattle, everybody's situation's a little bit different. In terms of cattle um, handling facilities and facility designs, what's some things that producers can do that maybe aren't necessarily high cost that can improve some of their their facilities? Right. There's some there's some really neat things. Um, and most important is, is thinking about where do cows hang up in your facility? And so finding out why that is. Maybe it's a shadow. Maybe it's um, a distraction that they're having. Um, maybe you're pushing too hard or, or, or whatever it is. And try to figure out those little things that can make a difference in the way cattle flow. So find out where those little log jams are and then try to correct those. There's some great resources on the Beef Quality Assurance website. There's a wealth of knowledge and, and resources out there. Free of cost for producers to go and look and try to make those little tweaks that'll make it go a little smoother for them. Excellent. Thanks, Dean, for your time today. Thanks for the expertise that you bring to this industry as well. As Dean mentioned, a lot of online resources and there's some stockmanship and stewardship events coming probably to your part of the country. So be sure to check out our website, stockmanshipandstewardship.org for those. Um, Get BQA certified. And with that, Kevin, we'll send it back to you. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll visit a stockmanship and stewardship event in Colorado and hear from some of the participants. Stay with us, we'll be right back. The elements can be relentless. Make sure they have respiratory protection to match. Saddle up and make your way to Denver, Colorado for the 2019 Cattle Industry Summer Business Meeting. This is your chance to stay up to date on beef industry trends and policies. Meet with industry leaders and your fellow cattlemen and women. Plus, you'll get insights on hot topics at the issues forums. 
Mark your calendar for the 2019 Cattle Industry Summer Business Meeting, July 29th to August 1st in Denver. Details at ncba.org. We're highlighting NCBA stockmanship and stewardship clinics and the hands-on cattle care training they offer to participants. Let's head to Colorado where Brian Baxter takes us inside another of these regional events. Just outside Fort Collins, the Ag Research Center at Colorado State University was packed for two days with cattlemen and women gathered to sharpen their cattle handling skills. The stockmanship and stewardship program is really a real hands-on way of producers being able to understand the low-stress cattle handling skills uh, that they can implement on their operations and see the benefits of these as they work their cattle, as they process their cattle in their everyday lives and implement them uh, so that they can understand the operational benefits of that. NCBA has helped put together a stockmanship and stewardship regional tour because we produce cattle differently in different parts of the, the country, but stockmanship is still a key component no matter where you are and, and how you raise cattle. So today we have about 180 or 190 people registered to come learn about stockmanship and stewardship and um, learn more about cattle handling, care of cattle, um, and those important topics. With speakers such as Colorado State's Temple Grandin, a panel of beef producers sharing their own experiences at the cow-calf and feedlot level and the chance to ask questions during a hands-on demonstration of low-stress cattle handling methods, it's no surprise the event in Colorado was a big draw. Here at Colorado we have producers um, from New Mexico, Wyoming, Kansas, all coming in here to Fort Collins, Colorado uh, to learn about these skills and these practices that they can implement on their operations. So these regional tours allow us to bring producers in from a wide spread area of the country um, to a single location with a lot of impactful information that they can implement on their operation. The event included small group sessions on topics designed to help producers more easily work cattle through a chute, load them onto and off of a stock trailer, and gather and sort cattle the low-stress way. All of these are practices that should work to create easier handling, better performing cattle. I think there is some economic benefit to stockmanship and stewardship, and actually today we've got some speakers on our program that are talking about some economic considerations of good stockmanship. And um, I'm really excited to see what they have to say, but really when it comes down to it, of course we're trying to get the consumer to eat our product and ensure them that what we're doing is right, but it does come down to dollars and cents, and if you can do things the right way, you're going to save yourself money in the end. The common sense says, sure, if you work cattle better and they handle better, they're going to breed back better, they're going to gain better, and those things. But I see results. Is What I like to see is I'll go to some different places, and they'll start changing things. They might do it different than I would or whatever, but you see the results. The cattle handle better, they wean better, they gain better. There's more appreciation for cattle that have been handled correctly, I think, at the next level. And so they're looking for ranches that are handling their cattle a little better and embracing the stockmanship component and the stewardship component of it as well. And they're willing to pay a little more for those cattle because they know how they're going to perform. For those who attended, whether they were cow-calf producers or feedlot crew members, there was real value in the beef quality assurance training and continuing education. We just recently got into providing um, ranch to table beef and our customers are saying it was so important to them to know where their beef came from. And this adds uh, just another dimension to us as far as our reliability and the quality assurance that our customers are after to have the kind of beef that they want to serve their families. For us, we're older, but we're still learning. And so we just felt like we needed to be here. I think especially I, I like to know more about how the industry is and for the cattle handling uh, mainly, understanding the cattle behavior uh, and the way that you posture with the cattle, I think should be one of those things I can definitely go there and apply. The message is it doesn't matter if you're large or small, that there's a certain protocol that we all need to follow in being good stewards of the land, good stewards of the livestock that we raise. And when we, when we do that, then we can call ourselves good stockmen. 
As valuable as the information was, producers also appreciated that this regional event with two days of hands-on learning, expert speakers, BQA training, and meals only cost them $75. I made the commitment to come before I looked at the price. And I remember the moment that I saw $75. That is really inexpensive. And then when you look at the value of the meals, the food has been awesome. It's worth far more than $75 investment. It was very inexpensive for, I felt like the value to, um, for us to be here was, was amazing. They could have charged double and we still, I still felt like we got our money's worth. We work on keeping the cost to attendees uh, reasonable for producers. We know that the information is valuable and we want to reach the producers with this valuable information. Um, and so we don't want this to be a cost prohibitive event. We want this event to be something that every producer uh, can attend, whether they have five cows or whether they have 5,000 cows. We want this to be an event that brings cattlemen together to learn about the best practices for our industry. From the Stockmanship and Stewardship Regional Event in Fort Collins, Colorado, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. These Stockmanship and Stewardship events are supported by the Chekhov-funded Beef Quality Assurance Program, and the BQA principles form the foundation for all of the lessons. Libby Bigler, the BQA coordinator for the state of Colorado, organized the regional event held at Colorado State University. She told Cattlemen to Cattlemen that good stockmanship and BQA are closely connected. The Beef Quality Assurance Program and stockmanship and stewardship really go hand in hand. Um, stockmanship is all about how we care for our animals, things like low stress cattle handling, um, just understanding um, how cattle think and those kind of things. And if we can understand that and handle cattle in that manner, we're going to help reduce bruising, we're going to help reduce stress, and stress obviously reduces immune function. And, and then as those things compile, we have more issues with quality. And so if we can start the foundation with good stockmanship, we're not going to have to worry about those BQA topics as much down the road. And so they really, really do work hand in hand. Want to rewatch an episode of Cattlemen to Cattlemen or catch up on anything you've missed? Then visit YouTube and subscribe to the Cattlemen to Cattlemen page. You'll find an archive of all of our shows, including valuable educational segments and producer profiles from all around the country. So check us out on YouTube. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll visit with the world-renowned animal behavior expert, Temple Grandin, to hear why she's a firm believer in low-stress cattle handling. We'll be right back. When you're in the cattle business, no matter how much it's a business, it still starts with cattle. It's this basic notion that sits at the core of how we approach things at Beringer Engelheim. We understand when you put the cattle first, it just naturally leads to doing the right things. If you want to do well in this business, you start by doing right. Take care of the cattle, and they'll take care of you. Recently, we participated in a stockmanship and stewardship program at Colorado State University, and Dr. Temple Grandin was one of the speakers, in fact, the keynote speaker. Uh, Dr. Grandin, you've been a pioneer in this area from the very beginning. Uh, what kind of progress have you seen over your career in terms of stockmanship? Oh, 100 million percent improvement in handling of cattle. When I started in the 70s, cattle handling was really terrible. And today, people are getting much more interested in stockmanship. The amount of people who are good at handling cattle, that has greatly, greatly increased. Uh, one of my former students, Ruth Wolliwody, did a survey of uh, large feed yards using the NCBA uh, objective scoring system, got very, very good results. 
Uh, falling down was way under 1% of the cattle. That's absolutely great. And Kansas State did a similar study with similar um, results. Stockmanship has improved. Now, I want to emphasize, I think it's important to do some numerical scoring of handling, because what that does is prevents people from slipping back into old ways of doing things. Okay, they may have gone to a workshop, oh man, gung-ho, we're gonna do uh, stockmanship right, and then without realizing it, the prods come out a bit more, the yelling and screaming comes out a bit more. But if you measure handling, then you go, well, my vocalization score and the squeeze chute's gone up, I need to do something to reduce that. You know, you have um, been instrumental in redesigning so many facilities across this country. What guidance do you give producers who are thinking about redesigning their facilities in terms of what they should keep in mind? Well, you want to lay things out correctly. I have found that selling somebody the thing, okay, we're going to buy the fancy new facility, people will do that a lot more easily than doing the management. And when I first started, a mistake that I made back in the 70s is I thought I could build the magic thing that would solve management problems. No, it doesn't. You have to have the good stockmanship to go along with the facility. You don't necessarily have to have the fanciest facility, but you've got to have non-slip flooring, and they have to be laid out correctly. You know, there's been discussion about tub type of facilities I design or bud box facilities. Both have to be laid out correctly to be the most effective. And it's not just the facilities and the people. You talked during your keynote about the cattle themselves and how important docility is. Yes. Um, we did some of the very first research 20 years ago on uh, on the temperament scoring. And cattle today are calmer. They get less scared because we have been doing 20 years of temperament selection. And on that first study that we did, we found that a calm cattle gained more weight. That's been replicated a whole bunch of times. So a lot of the cattle we have today are more docile. What would you like to see as you look ahead over the next 10 or 15 years in terms of the future of stockmanship? Well, I think stockmanship is going to continue to get better. I want to make sure that we don't get into some breeding and genetic issues. Um, 30 years ago, I noticed very bad leg conformation problems in pigs that caused lameness. There's been some of those issues in cattle. You've got to breed cattle with good feet and legs, and there are scoring charts available for that. Dr. Grandin, thank you so much for your perspective, and thank you for all the leadership you've provided throughout your career in helping us all understand just how important stockmanship is. No, stockmanship's really, really important. I want to commend uh, NCBA for doing all these stockmanship workshops. And this year, there will be many more opportunities to participate in these regional stockmanship and stewardship uh, meetings, and so I hope you'll put those on your calendar. We'll be back with more right after this. When you're raising cattle, you might have to solve a dozen problems before you even get through your first cup of coffee. Still, one thing we don't ever have to worry about is implant performance. We use Synvex One Grass. It's the only true 200-day trimblone acetate implant for grazing steers and heifers. And we can actually drink this before it gets cold. Ooh, that'll put hair on your chest. What does it mean to be dependable? It means you do what you say you'll do time and time again. Because performance isn't optional, and your task is essential. For over 95 years, we have proven ourselves to be the most dependable choice. That's why the cattlemen of this great nation trust Ritchie to provide fresh water on demand. Ritchie, proud to be a partner to the American cattlemen since 1921. Welcome back. NCBA's regional stockmanship and stewardship events provide valuable education to producers of all ages and skill levels. Brian Baxter has more on how younger producers can really benefit from these clinics. The regional stockmanship and stewardship event held in Clemson, South Carolina drew a crowd. And while there were plenty of experienced cattle producers at the event, there were also a number of young producers and students on hand. I brought a group of students from Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College to the Stockmanship and Stewardship event here at Clemson. It's, uh, it's the closest to us to be able to come. And the reason why I really urge these students to come is because they were going to have an opportunity to see some people who are really 
the, the industry experts in this. They're Kurt Pate, they're Ron Gill, they're people I teach them about in class. They get to hear industry experts that are just outside of their own small areas, and that's key because they can go back and they can do what they need to do on their own place. We're seeing more and more young people go into farming that don't have a background in farming. And I think an occasion like this is a great time for them to pick up um, good information from experts in the cattle business and learn things and help put good calves in the market. In two days of sessions, the group had the opportunity to network and learn about beef quality assurance and improved cattle management. Of course, one highlight was the live cattle handling demonstration presented by experts Kurt Pate and Ron Gill. What I want to do here now, if I want them to make a left-hand turn, I'll just speed the right side up a little bit. If I speed this right side up, if they kind of pick up and go faster, the right side goes faster, I'll draw these in and that'll make a left-hand turn. So the way to turn cattle from behind now, if I want them to go the other direction, I'll just speed this side up. If I speed this side up, slow that side down, they make a real easy, nice turn. I thought it was great. I've actually seen them on television and, and, and looked at it and thought, you know, there's a lot more to this than what you think. And I, I really like the calmness about it. I like the way they, they stress being calm and, and the position of where to get to get the cattle to move. A very good experience for me. I, I learned a lot today just looking at it from their point of view. What am I going to take away from this event? You know, a lot of the speakers have spoken on how to handle cattle, the proper way to do things. and That'll, that'll be a big thing because at home, you know, we don't necessarily do everything right, so that, that'll be a big part. And the management part that some of the speakers brought forth was, was really good and hit home and, and showed me ways that I can better our, our industry at home. Whether new to raising cattle or a lifelong farmer or rancher, the stockmanship and stewardship events deliver valuable education to producers of every kind, so everyone in the beef industry gets better together. I think sometimes we get in our own little area and we forget about really the big picture. What happens with those calves whenever they leave our place? What does that mean in terms of that consumer who has no contact? with production agriculture. I tell my students, I always think about it from the perspective that you would go out and eat what you produce. And that's what you're doing. You're producing a product that somebody that is hundreds or thousands of miles away will consume. And it makes a big difference to them. Regardless of the size of your operation from uh, five head all the way up to 50,000 head, um, the NCBA producer education program, stockmanship and stewardship, BQA, um, are designed for all cattlemen and that's intentional. It takes time and effort to be a part of the cattle industry, but ultimately we need to do our due diligence to provide a safe, quality, wholesome supply of beef to the consumer. And so we do everything possible to make the education opportunities and initiatives that NCBA supports accessible uh, to producers, uh, regardless of size, regardless of location. The stockmanship and stewardship events are being held around the country with funding support from Merck Animal Health and the Beef Checkoff. In Clemson, South Carolina, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now don't forget, if you'd like to attend one of these sessions, just visit stockmanshipandstewardship.org for details on when and where you can find an event. Still ahead, it's time for a visit with our good friend, Baxter Black. Stay with us, we'll be right back. How's your production on pasture? Our profits down? Our weight gains down? What are you going to do about it? Do something cost effective. Do something that will make a difference. To add the first and proven leader in feed through horn fly control to your cattle rations, ask for it by name, Altacid IGR. At Case IH, we believe it's our job to provide you with solutions. That's why our Farmall and Maxim tractors, as well as our tools and attachments, are designed with you in mind. From mowing to baling to loading and more, we're here to help turn your to-dos into to-dones. At Case IH, we'll keep your days running smoothly with equipment that's durable, versatile, and highly efficient. No wonder farmers are more loyal to Case IH than any other brand. Visit your local dealer or go to caseih.com forward slash livestock for more. 
At Leachman Cattle, we're committed to building more profitable cattle. As a third generation seed stock producer, our family has been in this business for over 80 years. Today, we have the best technology ever to build more profitable cattle. Our dollar profit index is a leader in the industry to help you balance all the traits that drive your bottom line. Give us a call or go to www.leachman to learn more. We know you're up before the dawn because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. I am I Global is here to help you do just that. Whenever I get a calving call from a good cow man, there's a pretty good chance that by the time I get there, my arm will not be the first one up the back of that cow. They'd have already tried to pull it, and if it was easy, they wouldn't call me. As the only local cow vet, <clears throat> I have calved a lot of heifers, and as such was most reluctant to keep score, because no matter how I tried and tried, I couldn't save them all. So on the side, I opened up a taxidermy store. Stuff your heifer was my motto. It was on my business cards, and the message I recorded on the phone said, if I can't save her, you can. As a conversation piece, have her mounted, or just standing there alone. I stuffed them in positions that I thought might catch the eye. One leg upraised, her milking on a tire, or rearing up like Trigger, or with X's on her eyes, surrounded by a priest and candles waiting to expire. There were action poses in the stance of how she last appeared, like on her back, a huge midline incision, or standing with a calf half out, feet first, the hind leg showing, that looked like some real bad rear end collision. Or head down in the charging mode, about to mow you down the water bag, a timeless counterweight, or a half mount, just the backside, with my OB chains protruding as I last saw her going out the gate. The market for my heifers in distress grew leaps and bounds. My cuddly cows were flying out the doors. People placed them on their mantle. People put them on the lawn like pink flamingos grazing on all fours, until, alas, some thought they saw a conflict going on, twixt my practice in my taxidermy shop. These charges pain me deeply, I told my vet technician. My reputation always been the top. What makes them think I'd compromise my veterinary work just to make a little money on the side? Well, she said, they might be misinterpreting your heifer calving price. Not many charge a hundred dollars and the hot. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter. We always enjoy our visits with you each and every week. If you'd like to stay up to date with what's happening with Cattlemen to Cattlemen, you can find us on Facebook. We keep you posted with information about upcoming shows, farms and ranches we're visiting around the country, and we share legacy photos too. So check us out on Facebook. We're back with more right after this. When we start to break down the economics of cattle production on pasture, uh, pasture is the cheapest source of energy that we have uh, for cattle production. Most estimates that you see from universities will say that uh, grazing an animal costs about 45 cents per head per day, and that pales in comparison to the cost of, of stored feed for supporting that animal. So forages, they're the base of our operation. Uh, they're the key to our economic success. So any type of management that we implement that's gonna improve that production, uh, whether that's weed control or fertility, uh, is gonna help us save money uh, at the end of the season. So when you're looking for weed control options for your pastures, go to rangeandpasture.com and find your local Corteva territory manager for more answers. 
If you're connected with the beef cattle business, then you should like the NCBA page on Facebook. The NCBA Facebook page shares photos, news, and valuable information about the beef cattle industry. You can also follow the NCBA Twitter feed at BeefUSA. So stay in touch with NCBA on Facebook and Twitter. NCBA takes pride in being a leading source of producer education to ensure all members of the cattle industry are as efficient and profitable as possible. It's just one of many ways NCBA is working to keep us in business. NCBA is also working hard both in Washington, D.C. and in Denver to protect the interest of cattle producers all across the country. But they can't do it alone. You can help by becoming a member. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. The ultimate goal of these stockmanship and stewardship events is to ensure producers have something to pass on to future generations. Each week, viewers send us great shots of family members working side by side on their operations. Let's check out some of them in this week's Legacy Photos. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.